Well, we are here today with Ser and Sotegi. Thank you so much for coming to uh, speak with us. Thank so you, excited. Monica. I'm so excited that you and Glad want to interview me, and I'm really excited about everything. So. Yes, Vida's back. Oh yeah, a lot to dig in, so much to dish about. Like when you see it, you're gonna be like, ah. <laughs> it's definitely um, another roller coaster ride. Of, woo, that's mm -hmm. it's gonna be it's gonna be awesome. Ten episodes this time, so it's gonna be more to chew on. That's yeah, sure. yeah. It's a great. I mean, it's got it's a very sexy show. It's very funny. It's got a lot going on. It's got great storytelling. Yeah. What's it like for you to be part of a show that is? <sighs> it's incredible because I'm an actor. You know, I'm part of the union, so it's like fellow actors get to see that are Latinx, that are queer, that have all these you know intersecting identities could see that there's representation. And so that means a lot. And it's behind the camera too. And it's, uh, this season we have all Latina directors uh, for each episode. So they, they direct, well, directed it block episodes. And um, Tanya gets to direct this, this upcoming season. And even Nancy Mejia, one of our writers, is our first, you know, like she's now directed an episode. So, that is exciting too. Like she also, Tanya also opens doors for other, others that are like herself and not like her to be like a, and that's exciting to be a part of because there's lots of people of color behind the, in the crew, behind yeah. the camera. Like we have every creative department led, headed by a woman. That's amazing. That's wonderful. You know, so yeah. Yeah, that's, Tanya, I'm proud Tanya Saracho, yeah. the showrunner, is an amazing force to be reckoned with. Yeah, she's. She definitely, Tanya is uh, like, uh, really likes to, you know, open up to, to say what, what, what do the actual people with lived experience, you know, have, you know, to say about this. This is what we're actually like, you know, talking about gentrification or if we're talking about Latinx representation. Our identities are political themselves. And that's something huge because like we're representing, we're talking about this stuff, but that's just like who these characters are. They're not trying to be political. They just are. Like, putting Eddie on the screen as a main character, that's, that's huge. And that's mm -hmm. like, in, itself, in of itself, is political. Because mm -hmm. you putting Eddie in so much of the screen time, up close, doing you know, all, all of that, as having an arc, being really involved, you know, obviously has stepdaughters, you know? Mm -hmm. And so, now that's huge. Right? You actually say, we do exist, we're here, we're not going anywhere. That's right. Yeah. Yeah. And, and Eddie is a, a masculine presenting lesbian. Yes. The character of Eddie, who's, mm -hmm. um, who has lost her partner of many years. And so the two daughters mm -hmm. come, for those who haven't watched it, um, oh, yeah. the two daughters come <laughs> in this sort of takeover. And they have, mm -hmm. so they have to work with Eddie. So it's two, two daughters coming in from out of town and have to work with Eddie and, and find out about their mom's life with Eddie. Um, so there's yeah. an interesting dynamic there. There's a push point, but there's also a lot of love and support. Yes, there is. You know, I think Eddie does like, see herself in these two uh, stepdaughters, the two sisters, you know, oh, yeah. in some ways and could yeah. see, you know, I think Eddie's the one that does know things that Emma doesn't know that Eddie knows, oh. things that her mama said, you know, and, oh. and in one of the episodes in season one is like, how can, you know, on the rooftop with Doña Tita, like how we wanted to, her, like Vidalia's dream was to, to reunite the family. And oh. that's also Eddie's dream too. Yeah. You know, what I, what I, and that's how much love Eddie has for, for the two sisters, you know, with Emma and Lynn. Mm -hmm. So um, there's that. I mean, that's, that's a huge thing that, that Eddie represents is that unity. Mm, yeah. Tell me about you as, a, as an actor out there in the world. Like, what reaction do you get? <laughs> What's it like to be out on the street? Do you get people coming up to you, hey, Eddie? Yeah, I do actually. Like I did Outfest or I'll go to events where there's a lot of LGBTQ identified people. And so then to have, you know, uh, one, of the, one of the fans like, just tell me how it affected them personally and the dynamics in their family watching it uh -huh. without them knowing, like very young person, like without them knowing they were lesbian or queer. So that was really like, cause then you get like the inside details that almost like what Vida does, you draws you in, you're like in there in the scene, like I'm not supposed to be here. I'm listening yeah. into all of the details and uh, the morning of this person or whatever, you know, it's sort of like you get, people tell you they're, in, they're real deep, oh. you know. So this is a person who told you about watching Vida with their family and they were not out to their family right. yet. Oh. And is able to talk about queer identity and like come out, but like, 
in a way that they're like, you see, like, you get connected to these characters, it'll be easier for me to come out, you know? Yes. And it's always difficult, you know? And she was very emotional. And then I started getting, like, I get emotional. <laughs> and then, like, you know, yeah. but it's, it's that kind of thing, which is sometimes not normal for other kinds of actors that, say, other kinds of actors that are basically, like, they don't have to deal with, I have to always represent my identity, whatever that identity, they don't have to think about that. Right. Like, we're always thinking about it. And so there's that. So it's like, that is more common. That has happened before, too. You know, when people tell you their deepest because they connect with your representation, yes. you know, on TV. Because they so rarely see themselves represented on TV. Yeah, right. And so it's a wonderful thing for the person who is queer or LGBTQ mm. and for their families, too. Yeah, it know? has like this, uh, this effect, like a domino effect. You yeah. Know? And you just never know sometimes, but sometimes, like, with my character, I think because it's so open, she's so open, and people get drawn in, and then they're like really invested in the character, then they're they're gonna be able to tell me their deep their little secrets, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Which is very sweet and endearing, actually, and like it it also like it, it you know you, you get reminded of wow like there's another generation they're looking at like what I used to think you know back when I was younger coming out, so it's that time you know for for the younger generation to see themselves and be like. <sighs> there's a possibility of other things other than what I'm experiencing on a daily basis. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And I know you're involved in some classes, right, that are for trans and non-binary people. Tell us about those classes. And um, Yes. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. Um, Christopher Rackler at uh, Outfest actually um, works with Anthony Mandel, who has acting classes that he offers. Um, and because trans and non-binary people experience three to four times the unemployment rate, and says people, how are you going to be competitive as an actor if you don't have the jobs to sustain you, to have that income to be able to say, I can afford acting classes? So then there's that. So sometimes I find that I had to train myself. I didn't have acting classes, you know. I just started, like, it was hard. It was like, I was like, you know, I'd watch. I'd watch Viola Davis, and I'd watch all these actresses and actors, and I was like, this is how, but I wanted to be able to be, that was great that uh, Christopher's uh, doing that with Anthony Mendel's class, because then I could mentor the, 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 the ones who are teaching the classes to make sure that they're able to, to work with non-binary and transgender actors um, in the way that's, that's more, like, inclusive and a safe space and you know and offer my own experience of having to navigate through the world of acting and the entertainment business so it's important to have that because it's sponsored like it's like basically like they don't have to pay for the classes they entered into this uh program and they were selected in their group that basically is all kinds of levels and so this is a great step for uh folks that are are able to take their you know their creative reins and say i want to be working in the industry as a who I am and what I represent so yeah yeah wonderful okay last question yeah <laughs> <laughs> three words to describe three. how you feel about Vida or about Eddie your character um proud um <laughs> uh, love and um movement movement forward it's forward. a movement that's so wonderful yeah. thank you so much oh thank you I this really is always lovely it. yes likewise